so this is my first ever video interview and I'm really really pleased that my first uh, video interview is with Corey Danziger who is uh, who stars in one of my favorite favorite ever movies Corey I'm absolutely over the moon to be speaking to you how are you I'm doing great man I'm so happy to be here and, and uh, we've obviously we've become friends over the last few weeks so we can now be doing this with you we have, haven't we? And and I've got to be honest with you, I've been trying to find you for a little while. Is I've that right? Trying, yeah, I have. I've been looking for you on Twitter and um, all sorts of social media. And it, and it wasn't until uh, probably a week or so ago when I thought, I wonder if he's on Facebook. <laughs> so I looked on Facebook and I found you. And then I had to sort of do a bit of investigation to find out if you were the Corey Danziger. Uh, and you were. And here we are. <laughs> That's great. I'm glad to know you. And uh, I, you were nice enough to um, introduce me to The Burbs uh, is the best movie ever page on Facebook. Yeah. And I've had a great time reading all the messages and, and uh, meeting a lot of the people on there. So um, I'm, it's, a, it's, it's a great thing that I got to meet you. Yeah, really pleased to meet you too. And I'm so glad you became a, a member of the, the Burbs as the best, what is it? The, the Burbs is the best movie ever. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and I, I've got to tell you, Corey, I mean, I'm a big um, Back to the Future fan. I'm a big Star Wars fan. But I don't think I've even watched those movies as much as I have watched The Burbs. Oh, isn't that funny? That's cool. That's really, that's, that says something. What, those are great what, movies. What what I what I really love about the Burbs, Corey, is that um, it's just so easy to watch. You can you can watch it when you're happy. You can watch it when you're sad. Um, it it it's my go-to movie. It, you know you can do, you can just switch off and watch it. Yeah. And yeah. it's so great. And it's probably the most quotable movie I've ever seen. Um, and, and I use quotes from it all the time. And on the, and on that Burbs is the best movie ever page. You, you see it now. People are sharing quotes all the time, and and then people will continue on the dialogue. <laughs> yeah, that's Absolutely true. Love it. I love it. There and, and certainly the people on there are really nice, um, and they they have some real creative memes that they've built, and, and <laughs> pretty cool. A very very enthusiastic. Um, so anyway, how did you come about being cast on the Burbs? Because you, you did you did do stuff before, didn't you? I did. Um, I started acting when I was seven, um, and uh, my mom did some acting as a kid and teenager, and so she knew how to get me involved in it since I I was a, a very precocious kid. So um, I wanted to act, and I I. Uh, I had a friend, John Dennis, who was in school with me and, and was acting. And uh, he was on some commercials and I thought that was so cool. On Saturday mornings when you watch cartoons, there would be John on the milk commercial. Right. So, mom, please let me do this. So <laughs> I got an agent, um, started doing commercials mostly. Um, and I had a reoccurring role on a show called Roxy. And um, I did some pilots. Uh, I did a film, uh, Memories of Me. And then I was cast in um, a TV series called Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, so and, we got that over here, Beauty and the Beast, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I, I was a kipper on that show Yeah. Uh, for a couple of years. And in the middle of that was when we shot The Burbs. Right. Uh, so I was working a lot at the time. Because I think I think Beauty and the Beast ran, I think, from memory, about eighty-seven to eighty-nine-ish. Is that right? Well, that, those are the two years that oh, that you were in it. That I was in it. The, yeah. The, the Beauty and the Beast fans kind of, most of them don't consider all four years. It's um, they don't count all four years. They right they two years because the first two years were the years that Linda Hamilton was on it. Mm-hmm. So from my understanding, the Burbs fan or the Beauty and the Beast uh, fandom mostly looks at those first two years um, since she was the lead in it. And then right. she got. Yeah. And what was it like working with Linda Hamilton? Oh, she's incredible. Linda is the nicest person ever. Um, just a, a great, great lady. 
the, I, I actually uh, did a convention because they have conventions um, for, for the show. Right. And um, I did a convention a few years back and she was there. She came and um, it was nice to see her because I hadn't seen her in probably, you know, 20 years. So it was really cool. Great. And, and uh, you know, uh, Linda Hamilton, really, really great actor, uh, actress. Uh, what, what, what uh, how did you feel um, being in that show and, and starring alongside these kind of people oh, in, in that show? I learned a lot. Um, well, first of all, the show had one of the best actors of all time um, on it, which is uh, uh, Roy Deutris. And he was... Uh, if you've seen, uh, have you ever seen Amadeus, for example? Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. He was father in Amadeus, um, but he he's a, a Shakespearean actor, and he was really a kind, thoughtful um, person to to work with. And and you know he didn't treat me like I was a kid. You know, right. they, no, no one did. Um, they had a lot of respect for for me as you know an actor, a fellow actor, and so that was really nice. And and he taught me some things about acting. When, when I was doing it. So it was great, really great, great experience. Great, so you, so you shot the burbs in the middle of um, the, the two seasons of Beauty and the Beast that you did. Right. I how, the, how, how did you end up being cast in the burbs? What, what, what process did you have to go through? You know, I, I remember I went to um, an interview for the role um, at Joe Dante's office, or no, no, it was, uh, I think it was at Larry Bresner's office who produced it, or right. it was the producer, and it was on the lot of Universal, and I, um, I went into the interview, and it was at Larry's office, and there was a woman named Betty, who I think was, I think she was Larry's assistant, right, um, and she was like the nicest lady in the, in the, um, waiting room. She was an older woman, she was, but she'd been in, on the Universal lot for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And um, I just had a good feeling. For some reason, when I went to that call, I, I just, I remember leaving and thinking, I'm going to get this. Um, and, and sure enough, I did. And, and um, I think I only went to one audition. I don't think I, I went to even a callback. Right. Um, uh, you know, and it's funny because I, I think about it now, especially when I watch the movie, um, I looked kind of like Tom Hanks, or I, I looked. It was it was reasonable to think that I would be the son of Tom Hanks and Carrie Fisher. I was gonna say that to you because I was watching it again earlier on because my son, who's three, um, he keeps asking us to put it on, so okay. I put it on earlier on today, and um, I thought to myself, I must remember to say to Corey that he does look like Tom Hanks. So you're right. It 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 really wasn't unreasonable. Uh, to think of you as Tom Hanks' son. Yeah, no, it, it, it's shocking to me when I watch it now, just how much we kind of looked <laughs> like we could be in the same genetic pool. <laughs> Good. Um, if, if, were you up against... That, you... It was the, that was the best summer of my life. Um, really? Oh, I had the best time on that, that movie set. You know, f films are... It, it, they talk about this a lot in Hollywood. Is it, it, they say, it, was it a happy set? Um, that's like a common term. Is it a happy set? Is it a you know a happy set? And um, the Burbs was a really happy set. Um, the crew was really nice. The cast was really nice. Everybody got very very close, and um, everyone liked going to work in the morning and 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 being on the lot. The, at the time that the Burbs was happening, there was a a strike yeah, uh, yeah. Right. and so it was it was we kind of had the whole lot to ourselves um you know that we there was there's a universal tram yeah that goes and does tours so other than the people on the tram it was us and the people on the tram that, other than that there wasn't much being shot <laughs> um I'll although you know I'll tell you, what, I'll tell you what was being shot was a, a film called uh, funny Farm. Funny uh, Farm. Have you ever seen that with Chevy Chase? Yes, yes, I have. I love Chevy Chase. Okay, that was that was shooting also at the time, and and was it? Uh, and I remember meeting Chevy because he was friends with Carrie, and he came right. to her 
uh, and I remember meeting him. Um, so that that that's the other movie that was that was shooting. I mean, Ch- Ch- so Chevy Chase, and uh, so so you, you you filmed it, you filmed the Burbs in '88, summer '88, you said, yeah. Uh, so Chevy Chase at that time was huge, <laughs> mega. Oh, biggest. Well, Tom <laughs> Hanks was the biggest because Tom Hanks had just done. Um, we shot while Big was in theaters. Right. So an idea of, I mean, Tom Hanks was the biggest actor in the world 30 years ago as well. I mean, he's still the biggest actor. Yeah. In, um, but he, he was, he, he, the Burbs was shooting while Big hit the $100 million mark. I remember that was a big moment because, yeah. you know, it was just this massive movie. You know, and we were shooting with, you know, the star of this massive movie at the time. And, and then, of course, there's Carrie Fisher, who's Princess Leia, the, the biggest movie of all time, <laughs> and the biggest movie of all time, next to the biggest movie at that moment. It was, it was. I mean, I think about it now. It's it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, but it must have been uh, very surreal, very surreal, and, and very cool having very, uh, Princess Leia play a play a mother. You know, it's funny. Is is I mean, to be totally honest. Um, now that I'm not acting, it's more surreal. At the time, I was working all the time, and you know, I was I was acting and stuff. And yeah, I I, I did recognize that you know that you know, um, uh, Carrie Fisher was obviously you know Princess Leia, and Tom Hanks is you know in, in these great movies and you know a big name at the time. Um, you know, the biggest actor at the time, but um, uh, somehow you get protected when you're acting professionally, where you don't lose, you, you, you somehow don't, um, you get, you get, you don't think that way, um, or I didn't at least, I didn't right. think too much about it. Now I look at it, you know, now that I'm not acting and, and had some years to, to go, wow, that was really, really incredible um somehow you're protected when you're acting you don't somehow you don't get go there as much so so it's 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 uh, as i always say i think there's only two perfect movies uh, one of them's back the future and one of them's the burbs and the reason i say that is because um the, the burbs is so well written yeah, it's so well directed. Joe Dante is uh, one of my favorite directors. I, I love pretty much everything that he's done. Yeah. Um, it, it's the the script is tremendous. The screenplay, the score by Jerry Goldsmith, so is is perfect. Honestly, it's so perfect. Um, and uh, the cast, the cast is just absolutely phenomenal. What was there many? Was there many egos around? Because, you know, you say people like Tom Hanks, you know, the biggest star at the time, Carrie Fisher, and Princess Leia in the biggest movie of all time. Was there any egos? Were they okay with you? Oh, not an ego in that crew. I mean, it was, everybody was happy. Everybody was nice. Everybody, Tom Hanks, is, his reputation is true, you know, to who he is. He's a really special person and, the enormous success that he's had shows you that nice people can be successful and, and win. Um, he's as nice of a person and the ego is not part of the equation, um, at least from my experience at all. Um, Carrie Fisher was as kind as could be. Um, you know, uh, Corey Feldman was great. He was awesome. So nice. Uh, I was so in cool. awe at the time too because he was you know the big teenage heartthrob and 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 you know i was practically a teenager so it was i was like wow this is if anybody was star if i was starstruck with anybody it was Corey feldman at the time well i was going to say Corey feldman at that time was probably the biggest child actor yeah certainly at that time possibly ever yeah you know um and i, and I did want to ask you how how you felt being cast alongside him because you did get a few scenes with him, didn't you? 
Yeah, oh, he was great. And he was so nice. And he, I think he knew that I admired him and, and, and was just as kind and nice to me as it, got, as it gets. He was just a, a thoughtful, older, you know, teenager being nice to the young little kid that's, you know, probably looking at him like he's the coolest guy in the world. <laughs> uh, but, you know, he's, there's a reason why Corey Feldman's done, you know, 200 films, and that's because he's good to work with. Um, he's, he's talented, but he's also somebody that, you know, is just a nice guy. Um, I actually ran into him not that long ago. Did you? Um, I, I was at a gas station in North Hollywood, and um, and sure enough, uh, you know, this beautiful SUV pulled up, and I was pumping gas, and Corey Feldman gets out of it, and I say, Corey, and he turned to me, he looked at me, he kind of looked at me like, um, <laughs> it's like Corey Danziger from the Burbs. We we worked together. It was like, oh my God, you know, and we sat and talked and caught up a bit. And um, uh, my mom had just passed away at the time, so he, you know, he, he knew my mom and and uh, nice. we talked a bit about that. And um, um, in fact, let me see. I I brought some artifacts. Um, cool. I, I, I'm I'm excited to see what you've got. So uh, let's see. Um, uh, well, I'll tell you one thing that was interesting um, is after we wrapped the burbs, um, Corey had just uh, finished a movie. Do you remember the movie Dream a Little Dream? Yeah, yeah. Um, so he invited my dad and I to go see Dream a Little Dream's uh, premiere. Cool. Uh, you know, the premiere of it where they, you know, they show it to the cast and crew and stuff. Yeah. And that was real kind and considerate that he did that. Um, okay, so here's here's the first artifact I have is a call sheet. I don't know if you can see that. Wow. But this is a call sheet from the actual shoot. Can you see it at all? Yeah, I can just make out uh, exterior Rumpfield's yard. Okay, and then you can see the the, uh, read that at all. Uh, I can see Ray Peterson, Art, Mark Rumsfeld, Carol, Dave, Bonnie, Ricky, Hans, Uncle Ruben, Dr. Kopech, Steve, Steve Kuntz, uh, Ricky's first friend, Cop, and Gail. Yeah, and, and um, so what, so what's up? So what's is, the names of all the actors there, too? So what? So is that um, is that a scene that's happening in the movie? This is a, we get in the beginning of the day. So every day you get one of these. Right. And this tells you what was shooting. So this this day was on July thirteenth, nineteen eighty eight. And that day they shot uh, an exterior location in front of Rumsfeld's yard. Um. And. Rumsfield is back on the roof. So this is the day they shot the, <laughs> Rumsfield raising the flag. They shot that uh, this really? day. They shot um, Rumsfield on the roof in Bonnie leaves. And then um, they shot on May, May, Mayfield Place. Um, looks as though Walter, then Clo the Clopex. Oh, this is the day that the, the Clopex arrived. Their car arrives right. as well outside. Um, Clopex with coppers. Yeah. <laughs> there were, four, there were four, approximately four scenes that were shot this day. Um, and uh, that's really great. That's one of my favorite scenes where Rumsfield's on the on, on the, the roof and Ricky comes running over and shouts, "Yo, Rumsfield!" Right? <laughs> and he falls so off the roof. Wednesday, <laughs> so just you know, that's shot on Wednesday. Um, <laughs> And my mom, I, you know, God bless my mom. She was awesome, but she, um, she saved this stuff for me, you know, just because she knew I would appreciate it. You know, here's another one. This is from Friday, the 15th of July. Um, and this is the day that they shot, um, uh, let's see. Bonnie arrives pre-explosion. So this is the day that Bonnie arrives back home. So Carrie arrives back home. Um, the cops arrive this day. 
Uh, Ricky, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so this is this is the day that the power goes out. Rumsfield about the power, he knocks the power out. Um, yeah, so this is great. I have they, they are so great to have. It's a good job your mother, your mother saved them. Oh, man, I had a mom. No doubt. She was incredible. So I also brought another artifact. Can I show you one more thing? You absolutely can. Okay. I am uh, I'm on the edge of my seat. Okay, cool. So this is, we got this um, January 17th. Um, this is the, the invitation to the screening of the Burbs. Oh, wow. So this is after the film was edited. They, they did a screening of it. And um, it was at the Cineplex Odeon on La Brea. And, um, and it was on February 13th, 1989, at 8 o'clock. That's my wife's birthday. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, maybe that. Oh. <laughs> that, that was our that was our seventh birthday. <laughs> that is so funny. That was your seventh birthday. Yeah, that would have been our seventh birthday. So, so can you? I mean, do you remember that time? Do you remember going to see it? Yes, I sure do. I I, I totally remember it. It was um it was amazing. Um, the premiere was. Everybody got together after not seeing each other for a while because the post production, you know. Yeah. Over months, and months. Yeah. Um, and we thought everybody just thought the film turned out great. We were all really excited and and so happy. And I mean, Hollywood is amazing. It's a pretty special, <laughs> pretty special place. I'm, um, I'm, sh I'm sure I read that um, Joe Dante said that it, it wasn't the the movie wasn't that well received by critics, uh, but but it did make a bunch of money. Oh, it did. No, at the time. Cinema. Yeah. It was, yeah. Um, it's a good job nobody listens to critics. That's right. <laughs> this, is, this is kind of an odd artifact. This is, this is um, imagine put together some kind of legal document for me to attend the night when the house blew up because I was underage. Ah. You know, I needed to have a social worker there. Um, because I think they did it at approximately 10 p.m. and would like to utilize him until 3 a.m. So I worked that night, and I got to see the house explode. You know, the big explosion. Yeah, yeah, cool. But you're not there. You're I'm Dave's not, not there. there. But we shot some scene that I yes, yes, I was not there. But they allowed me to come. They wanted me to come and see it because they knew I would enjoy yeah. the house. <laughs> Brilliant. There was, there was a few different endings, wasn't there? Shot. There was. There was. There, I think. I think on the DVD they have the alternative ending on one of the DVDs menus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Here's one more. I'm sorry. Okay. Here's no, no. One. Keep going. Keep okay. going. This, this is kind of neat. This is the Burbs Rap Party. Cool. Invitation. And as you can see, I somehow doodled um, on it, but. When I was a kid. But anyways, <laughs> it's an and it says uh, Carrie Fisher, Tom Hanks, and Joe Dante invite you to invite you and a guest to the heart of the very, very beautiful San Bernardino Valley on the outskirts of the very, very beautiful town of San Dimas, where the water park Raging Waters has been rented for the exclusive use of the cast and crew of the Burbs. Wow. So Carrie, Tom, and, and Joe rented out the entire water park <laughs> so we could all have a, a rap party. And I'll tell you, in the world of film, and I've done enough movies and TV to tell you about rap parties, that is the most ex extraordinary rap party in the history of movies. <laughs> Usually it's, it's, you know, a backyard barbecue practically, but this is – they went out of their way. They, they really made something that no one on that – crew and cast will ever forget it was incredible uh that I can just imagine i bet it was incredible who was who was your guest who was your plus one well my mom and my dad went and then i think i brought a, a friend from school right 
Um, so you, you would have been popular at school then with, <laughs> with that friend. <laughs> with that invitation, yeah. I probably yeah. Been, um, that was pretty neat. The other thing that I found is um, they gave awards. Um, <laughs> they called it the Burbed Awards. Right. And this was a wrap party at the end of the shoot. Um, they, they made some awards for the cast and crew. And I'll just read a couple of good ones. Um, Joe Dante won for best haircut. And the reason why is because he got a major haircut while we were filming. Carrie and Wendy Shaw um, hooked him up with a great stylist and he got a great haircut. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Larry Bresner run for one for best advertising of the Budweiser comedy tour. I don't know what that's, what that, <laughs> um, Carrie Fisher won for finding the best places to make mobile phone calls. Um, <laughs> that was just when mobile phones were just starting. So Carrie had a mobile phone. It must've been about that big. <laughs> yeah, that was, Carrie had a mobile phone. So, um, Tom Hanks won for spending more time playing hockey than his role. <laughs> uh, oh, and this is my favorite one is Rick Dukeman won for the best marketing techniques for skates. The the brand. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He owned a, he owned a skateboard company and um, the kids in the movie all had skates shirts. So yeah. I, I actually posted that up on the um on the burbs page on facebook just a few days ago before i got in touch with you um just saying i don't know how widely known this is but rick duckerman owned the skates um yeah. brand which is on steve kuntz's t-shirt that's right that's right and yeah it, it, and it wasn't that well known rick worked it he was working that into the script somehow <laughs> Uh, so I think you've got something else to show us, haven't you? I got one more thing, uh, and then I got to go, but I got one more thing. No problem, no problem. This is my chair from the Burbs. So this is, wow. this is an oddity, but this everybody had a chair. And this was my chair, and what's cool about it, and I'll take it off and show you, is... What's really neat about it is it's got signatures from a bunch of the cast on it. I, I did it real quickly. I remember uh, I, I got signatures at the, you know, one afternoon and then had the race. I remember I was like, I brought, I, you know, the last day I went and took as many signatures as I, as I could, but there's Rick Dukeman's. Oh yeah, I can see. Yeah. And says, the chicks love you almost as much as they love me. Your friend. <laughs> um, there's Courtney Gaines. Oh, Courtney, yeah. There's Courtney. And there's Joe. Joe Dante's signature, he writes it like a school kid. So. <laughs> yeah, like he's 10 years old. Uh, that's Heather Haas, who played the girlfriend, Corey's girlfriend. Um, here's Bruce Dern. Uh, I love Bruce Dern. Me too. He says, you are great, Bruce Dern. <laughs> and then here's Corey Feldman's. And Corey says, you are a very, you are a special friend. Fantastic. Corey, yeah. So that's something that I'll always have. How much do you want for it? <laughs> Oh, priceless. Man, it's, it's priceless, oh, I imagine. Forever. Yeah, what, what a great thing to have. Absolutely fantastic. Corey, thank you so much. Brother, I, I enjoyed it like you couldn't believe, man. I was so happy that I, you invited me to do this. I'm so happy that I got to be in the Burbs group and meet all the people that are there. It just, you have no idea how special the movie is in my heart and, and uh, just being able to talk about it, you know. I mean, it's 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 a it's a, it's a cult classic now. It's a it's a cult favorite. It is a cult favorite. Man. Well, I'm glad we're now friends too, Adam. Yeah, me too. Me too. Definitely. And um, I, I dare say we'll keep in touch. 
we will definitely keep in touch. Magic. Corey, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, brother. Be well. Cheers. Bye.